Oh, Brenda. Miss Aviva, come on in, girl. Thank you. <laughs> what a sweet ride. Oh, wait a minute. Did I lock you out? Oh, you locked out. It's, it's fine. been so long <laughs> since I've been in this thing, I've forgotten how to use it. So, Viva Las Vegas. But what's your real name? My real name is Liv Elise Ostis. Liv is Viva in Norwegian and seemingly unpronounceable <laughs> for most people. <laughs> so do I call you Viva or do I call you Liv? Your choice. Um, they are interchangeable, so yeah. You're known as Portland's most famous stripper, but I know that you're <laughs> a lot more than that. How would you describe yourself? Well, I'm a... Um, I'm a musician and a writer and an advocate for this industry and stripper kind of comes maybe further down the list. I'm a mom, I'm a preacher's daughter. Something else that you're now going to be known for is TEDx speaker. You're invited yes. to be up there on the stage. Yes. What's your message? My message is that sex work is a feminist enterprise and that stripping is art. Mic drop. Plain and simple. Yeah, again, I don't think this should be rocket science but it is very you know some people really scratch their heads about that what could be more normal than a nude body we're all nude under our clothes <laughs> and uh, it strikes me as a little irritating and somewhat amusing that people still think this message I have is so interesting that um, naked women are art that naked women are powerful so what's the secret to your success and your longevity in this industry it's mm. so impressive. You have been doing this for how long? 26 years. 26 Since years. I graduated from college. I think the secret is, I don't know if I can say it on the air, but I think oh, it's yes, my- Oh yes, you can. We'll bleep you if we need to. I think it's my <laughs> ASS, my Norwegian <laughs> ASS. I have a big, strong, powerful ASS and that um, gets people's attention and then they start listening to me when I start opening my mouth. You know, some people are shocked to hear a stripper hold forth on stage, but you know, I, I, I get in there and I work on their brain. So there's a vulnerability that comes across on that stage that um, allows for such connection that is so meaningful. And I, you know, that's the opposite of superficialness glitz. There's of course a lot of beauty and surface beauty, but there's even more underneath the surface beauty, in my opinion. You continued stripping after you went through breast cancer treatment. You had a mastectomy. Yes, yes, I had a double mastectomy and I, yeah, I didn't think I would be back on stage after that. But you know, nobody at the club blinked an eye. It's, they, are, they are not just looking at your body. Most of the time they are looking for something more than that, for connection. Why else are we alive? We're humans, are bees, you know, we need our little hive. And I think modern life um, flies in the face of that. We're all in our cars driving to our office jobs from our little houses and it, we don't get to access our communities as much as we have in times past. And mm. um, I think the strip stage really healed me and had me, you know, allowed me to accept my new body. I wish everyone could have, you know, use, become a stripper for a little bit to accept their bodies. As amongst women in America, there's so much body dysmorphia and I think if you re if you do that work you realize that all bodies are acceptable and beautiful and strong. I think people will be surprised to hear you say that the customers are interested in conversation. What the heck <laughs> conversation are you having? That is not what I think of when oh I think gosh. of a stripper. What are you talking about? Well, I'm a geography fetishist <laughs> and I'm a music fetishist. So those are things that we all have in common. So that's where I start, you know, oh, hi, where are you from? And I'm from Cincinnati. Oh my God, that's the hardest word to spell. How do you spell that? I mean, that's like how I start work my way in um, <laughs> and I've lived all over the world I've lived in Africa and Asia and Europe Minnesota South Dakota Massachusetts New York so I have a lot of you know talking points <laughs> and tell me about your bands because you've got more than one my current band is called Bergeret and we're a vocal trio we sing medieval and Renaissance sex pop so, you know, Ooh. music has always had the same topics and it's you know, like right. sex and love and sometimes <laughs> drinking. And so I actually brought you one of our CDs. Oh, you did? Yes. That's so you can enjoy it if you have a CD player, which a lot of people don't. And if you don't, you can just look at the beautiful image. The <laughs> art is great. You're absolutely right. Would you like to sing a little something for okay. us? Okay, okay, sure. That I know? give you a taste. Okay, yeah, do. Long ton salmon courtesy, sin bien amar. 
Konkis versa bus nu fijen sabame Ens me sui montan trymi de lui loer Or puis me sendurri si ma konki du sa wa ma si pri You mentioned yeah. your dad being a pastor. That's another crazy thing. Holy moly! <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> I guess, is it or is it a total stereotype? <laughs> I think it's mm. embarrassing for him, hard for him, but I think we do the same career. We are preaching the truth and you know that everyone should be forgiven and that connection is paramount. And I just admire and respect my dad's ministry so much. Um, does he so much admire and respect yours though? Yeah. That's hard a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it is painful. I think. He does, but it's still hard for him. Like, you know, they, there's an opera based on my first book and this it's re replays the most painful scene of our family's life. Probably when my dad found out I was a stripper and, and they flew out for the opera and they saw the line around the block outside the star theater and, and a full orchestra playing these songs that were written about our family. And he was so proud and he gave me this compliment that I'll never forget. He said, this is, the most amazing community I have ever seen. Mm. And it's true, and that this community support for me and my weird career, my daughter, and you know, like breast cancer battle, and you know, it is. And you know, the more crises you have, the more the community is called to action and the, the more cohesive it becomes. What do you tell your daughter about what you do? Yeah, well, I've had the best trainers in the world, all these women I worked with who are mothers, I've seen how they, weather the battles and how their children, sometimes there's a point around seven to 11 that they are ashamed. But after that, they seem to really embrace it. But you know, that said, she didn't get to choose this for her mom to do. I, you know, I think I, I chose this job knowing my parents wouldn't like it, but I never thought I'd have a kid. And then um, it, it will become a part of her story. I want them to be proud of their bodies, proud of me and what I do, but I also, you know, we have to be sensitive to the fact that not everybody is. So I'm still, I'm still, we talk about it enough that I like, so I can touch base with where they're at. And I don't have all the answers, certainly, when it comes to how to shepherd them. And that's real, that's honest. <sighs> yeah. Nobody has all the answers. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we're rolling up to this big old billboard. Oh, whoa, I see the legs. You do? Oh, there they are. Oh, that is wild. Is that crazy? Oh, I haven't come up Burnside to see it yet. Oh my gosh, look at those muscles. Those are cross country skiing muscles, by the way. I like it. <laughs> and or swimming. The queen of glutes. <laughs> Tell me about the photo shoot. Yeah, I've got my left hand on my um, cancer breast, so and oh, interesting. So there's okay. some meaning there, I think, yes. for Ted and for me. I'm looking over my shoulder. That 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 look on my face is not one I usually have. It's interesting. I think that's why people don't always recognize me. I think I'm a little suspicious at the time of Ted. Like, what? What does this mean? What does this audience? What does talking to this audience mean for my career? This is not the usual vulnerability at the strip club. It's something different. Yeah, they did a great job. It's audacious. Uh, for sure. So here we are, Mary's Club. Mary's. Yeah, this is a special <laughs> place for you. It is, it's my, it's my home. How long have you been homes. dancing here? 25 years this summer. After you. Thank you, madame. Oh, wow. This Here's is the it, new that's club. your stage. Yep, there's my stage. Here's Vicki Keller, the the OG. <laughs> I love that. Hey, Vicky. Hi, Vicky. Oh, another hug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is where the magic happens. So tell me about this place. What makes this so special for you? For me? Well, yeah. the Keller family. Yeah, it's just a wonderful women-run club. You have always shown great respect to us personally and presented how to respect dancers within the community, and that's inestimable. What do you think about Viva? What does she mean to Mary's? Wow. <laughs> I just love her. I mean, she's like a third daughter to me, really. Do you want to see the Viva wall? Well, oh, yes, it, it absolutely. Might be, we have to see the Viva wall. I don't know Viva if it's NSFW. Oh, no, there's clothes. So here's a little Viva wall. <laughs> Women who've worked here over the years. Storm's a, an honorary stripper here. And here's Courtney. She 
dance chair, I bought my first guitar showing my teeny little titties here. And y'all were very nice to me. <laughs> Thanks, Courtney Love. This is my home away from home. Oh Welcome to Mary's stage. I Red feel Day. like this is your living room. You look You're great up here. <laughs> With the pole? Yeah, do a swing or two. <laughs> I'll let you do the swing or two. Yeah, we're not exactly dressed for it, right? Right. <laughs> and so it says dancers work for tips only. Tips so only, yeah. That's how all of you get paid, just tips. No, yep. nothing from the club. Yep, my mansion on the hill was paid for a dollar at a time. <laughs> oh. Well, that works. And then worried. your pitter-patter also includes a tagline that I think is just legendary. <laughs> you want to yes. give it to us? Oh, yes. Um, yes my, every time I pick up a dollar bill, I say, thank you for supporting the arts. Thank you for supporting the arts. Thank you for supporting the arts. <laughs>